A very good morning to everyone present. I, Evangeline, pursuing M-Pharm in Pharmacology from Faculty of Pharmacy, MS Ramaya University of Applied Sciences, would like to welcome everyone for this webinar on strategies for GPAT and NIPA preparation by Ms. Shrishti Manoj. This webinar is conducted in association with Pharma Elite. So before starting the webinar, I would like to inform all the participants that your microphone has been disabled for smooth conduct of the session. However, the chat box uh, will remain open for posting your queries, if any. So the microphone will be enabled during the question and answer session. So with that, let me take this opportunity to, to introduce the speaker of today's webinar, Ms. Shrishti Manoj. So she is presently pursuing her master's in pharmaceutical management from Manipal College of Pharmaceutical Science, Mahi. So Ms. Shrishti has secured fifth place in national level debate on reservations in India organized by MIT SOG in 2019, and third place in state level essay writing competition organized by Chief Electoral Officer Goa in 2020, and has also achieved an All India rank of 52 in Manipal entrance test in the year 2021. So with this brief introduction, I would like to hand over the session to Ms. Shrishti. Thank you. Good morning, everyone, and a warm welcome to this session. Firstly, I would like to thank Ramaya University of Applied Sciences, Department of Pharmacology for giving us this opportunity to conduct this session. Also, I would like to thank coordinator, doc, uh, student coordinators, as well as the faculty coordinators and principal sir to, for giving us the opportunity to conduct this session. And a warm welcome to all the students. I'll be briefing you on the topic today, strategy for GPAT and NIPA preparation. In case you have any doubts and queries, uh, please feel free to post them in the chat box. I will address your doubts one by one as we move ahead. So let's begin. Firstly, I would like to show you these are the uh, rankers of uh, NIPA 2020 ranks, that is last year's ranks. We have already achieved the best rank, that is All India Rank 01 in Farm MBA category. The same student has achieved All India Rank 02 in MS category and Rank 18 and so on. Similarly, we have achieved many more ranks in the year 2020 as well as 2021 also, All India Rank 8, 20, 15. So what is it that these students are doing something different as compared to the ones who are uh, answering the appearing for the exam. So we all know there are thousands of students uh, who are appearing for the exam, but number of qualifying students is very few in hundreds. So why is it that only few people are qualifying in spite of thousands of students across the nation who are uh, appearing for the exam? So there is something different which these qualifying category of students is doing, and that is what we need to focus. And I will guide you through that in the entire session. So. The first thing that I would like to show you all is the statistics for GPAT results. Now, uh, let's compare, uh, say two years will compare, year 2019 and let us compare year 2020. You see the second column that is registered students. In the year 2019, we have around 48,800 students approximately who have registered for the exam. Similarly, in the year 20, they have, 2020, there have been around 50,000 students. So you see here that number of students registering is in 48 and 50,000. But if you see the fourth column where you see the figure of qualified students, they are around 4,000, 4,900. So what is it that only 10%, you can see out of 48,000, if 4,100 are qualifying, it means only 10% of the students are qualifying for the exam. So this 10% is somewhere the zone or the area where we have to be. Because only when you qualify GPAT, there are certain advantages. Now, why is it that we have to qualify GPAT? Now, GPAT is a basic, I would say, eligibility criteria. GPAT, I hope you all know the full form that it is, Graduate Pharmacy Aptitude Test. So, this is the entrance test which you all have to appear when you are in your final year VPharm for your admission to master's, that is your MPharm course. The ones who are GPAT qualified are given an upper hand preference in case of admissions. And ones who are not qualified, it's not that you will never get a seat, but your chances of getting into a good university or a good college are less. So basically, GPAT qualification is a minimum requirement, which we have to. And over that, there are several other entrance exams, which we will discuss today. That is NIPAR, BITS, Manipal, ICT. And there may be several other exams, which you might be also aware about. 
so when you have to qualify all this exam that is for those respective universities but gpat is a national eligibility test like you answer j w e or neat after your 12th standard like that gpat is a minimum thing which you have to do after your b farm so those who are in final year i'm sure you are already prepared for your gpat because it is in the next upcoming days and i think you all are a mixed crowd of students from second year and third years so those who are still on the way to appear for gpat this is the right time for you to start your preparation for gpat so you see this all india last column all india rank 01 score it is 336 302 315 and so on so year after year the competition is going to increase irrespective whether the paper is easy or the paper is difficult or whatever is the situation the score of the topper increases the competition increases so your chances of qualification has to increase that is where you have to work smartly because everyone is doing hard work something that we need to do is smart work so this now you will wonder in today's session when i'm talking about gpat why am i showing you this picture i hope everyone knows him you don't need any introduction he is none other than sachin tendulkar so why this picture is put in today's presentation sachin tendulkar was the one who first time scored 200 runs in a single odi match before sachin tendulkar nobody else had set this record similar after he did there have been several other players who have been following this and they have achieved 200 runs in odi three times in year 2014 2013 as well as 2017 so it is someone who needs to do it for the first time to set a benchmark or a target and then there will be several other people who will follow him or her so this is what is going to i'm going to relate this example from field of cricket to your gpat or your academics our target has to be to get the first rank in gpat that is all india rank 01 that is you should target the best rank and the best score because only when you target that you will reach your upper hand if you just target qualification that is minimum score just on the cut off line you will never reach on a higher side but if you target the best rank that is our target is all india rank 01 with 500 marks now what do i mean by 500 marks 500 marks is a calculation explaining that in gpat there are total of 125 questions each question carries four marks that is if your answer is correct you get four marks for every question and if your answer is wrong that is you appear or attempt the question and if you get it wrong you get negative marking that is minus 1 so we are targeting 500 meaning 125 into 4 marks for each correct answer will give you a total of 500 and now you will say how is it possible to get 500 when there is negative marking in the entrance test because that is where our fear zone lies as a student even i have been facing the same how to target this tackle this negative marking so this is where we need to work hard and improve ourselves because getting 500 marks is not impossible but it is a bit tricky for which we need to work so getting 500 marks should be our target so that you at least reach somewhere around 500 if you just target the cut off say i need to just clear the cut off last year it was 186 this year i'll target 190 if you just target with that 190 you will never reach ahead so when we talk about gpat now you will have certain questions how to prepare most important thing how i'll study it is four years of syllabus in semesters we having eight semesters distributed in four years now when it comes to gpat how am i going to do all this together so the several questions this which we have collected from the feedbacks from students that is how many question papers to be practiced how many questions to be solved how to prepare for gpat why is it different from our semester which are the books to refer how you are going to uh, plan and study these are the several questions so we see what to do and how to do now these are the questions for which i'll guide you one by one the first thing when we talk about books to refer when we talk about books to refer now this is one important criteria that is from where you are studying makes a big difference because if you choose the correct reference book you are going on a correct path but if you choose a wrong book that is going to waste your time now i'll give you example especially the ones who are in third years as well as final years you might be already aware about the books uh, named by authors pearson and inamdar so these are the books Uh, which are the standard reference books when it comes to gpat because uh, they have all the content which is required from all the subjects but it is given in brief because if you open pearson book you or those who have already seen the book you might understand that all your four years subjects are concise and compiled in a short form and you have practice questions in am there is another book which has uh, several question papers to practice i think from year 2010 or 12 up to the latest paper of 2021 so you will get all the practice questions along with the answer key and the explanation 
So these are the two ideal reference books which you have to do when you are preparing for GPAC. But this is when you are already prepared. But something that you need to do on a grassroots level is your subject-wise preparation. So I'll give you an example. Say you pick up the subject of pharmacology. How are you going to study for pharmacology? The best reference book or the common book which we all refer in our academics is KD Tripathi. So this is the best reference book when it comes to pharmacology because it has everything in detail about all the chapters and all the drugs that you need. The next thing we can talk about, say, example of physical pharmacy. Now, physical pharmacy is a subject in which uh, I'll tell you there are several books which we have referred already in our lower classes of first year B farm or second year B farm. Say Subramanyam, Martin, then uh, Parhadkar. There are different different books as our faculties recommend. We keep referring. But when it comes to entrance exam, picking up a standard reference book is important. For physical pharmacy, Martin is the best reference book. Now, why I'm stressing on this? Because I think in the year 2018 or 2019, there has been a question from subject of uh, physical pharmacy topic of rheology. And the example was exactly the same, which was in Martin's reference book. The exact same question had appeared in the entrance test. So those who have referred to this correct reference book may have already solved this question and found it easier. Whereas someone who saw the question for the very first time in the exam might have found it difficult or took some extra time to solve it. So this is where your practice and what you have studied from where you have studied makes a difference. If you pick up the wrong reference book, you will anyways end up studying the topic, but it may not be 100% beneficial to you. So always choose the correct book before you start studying. Then the next thing that is on the slide is what are the number of questions to be attempted? Now, this is one of the most important thing. And throughout the session, I will be emphasizing on this. That is practice question paper and number of question papers to be practice, attempted. So now what you will say, how do I know whether the paper will be easy or the paper will be of a difficult level? So when it comes to number of questions to be attempted, this is something you, you have to decide beforehand and plan in advance. You cannot rely on the day of exam to decide that what I will do and how much I will do. Now, how you will plan in advance? Because we don't know, right? Paper is always a surprise for us because it's an exam. So with regards to number of questions to be practiced, main thing we need to know is we need to attempt maximum. Because with the fear of negative marking, if you attempt minimum, you are reducing your chances to your... Uh, in greater ranks if you attempt minimum your rank will also be minimum so you have to target the best way to get the maximum correct answers and you will know this only when you practice question papers the thing that i showed you all on first slide that is the rankers of pharma light uh, getting all in the rank zero one in niper a entrance test so these are the people who have practiced thousands of questions before going for the exam because see when you practice question paper one you get to know say i attempted all 125 in my practice test and at the very first attempt say i got just 60 correct and majority wrong okay you might feel a bit nervous or disappointed but it's okay because it's your practice test the same should not happen on the day of exam so as in when i practice more and more questions i will realize from 60 correct i move to 80 correct gradually i move to 100 correct and a day comes before exam where i'm getting say 110 correct so I understand my capability that out of 125, somewhere around 100 to 110 is what I can best attempt. This is what is my level of preparation. Or you realize that in spite of doing everything, you are just reaching 90. But that's okay. But you will at least understand that you are at the level of 90 and you will play around those figures in exam. You may not attempt 125 if you're not getting that much. So this is where it is important to know where you are standing after your preparation and attempt the number of questions accordingly. You cannot uh, do that A, B, C, D and try and test your luck at the level of graduation for entrance exam. One of those days which we played pranks in childhood that I'll guess the answer and I'll mark it. Let it, be go, let it go correct or wrong. You cannot do it for GPAC. So make sure that you have practiced enough of question papers. You will get them in Inamdar book as well as you will find them on our portal. We have an online test series portal where there are thousands of questions, like around 200 papers and each having 125 questions. So you imagine how many questions students are practicing and they all are your competitors. So you should be at the same level. Then next, what is the difference in preparation for GPAC and semester? Now you will say that I'm already studying for four years of PFAM. I'm clearing my eight semesters of academics. Why is it that I have to prepare something different for GPAC? So GPAT is basically, you know that this is all entrance exams are MCQ based. And whereas your semester is your theoretical knowledge, that is your 
what your writing skills matter in your semesters that is you write extensive answers long answers because you need 5 marks or 10 marks for that long answer but when it comes to entrance test you are already given the question actually the task is easy because you are already given four options the answers are right in front of you you just need to select the best alternative but how so this is way your fundamental concepts and the knowledge that you have learned in semesters plays an important role whatever you have learned you should be in a position or capable to apply that knowledge that is your application skills is what is tested say i'll give you an example of pharmacology you already know the drugs classification you know the mechanism of action of drug but you will be indirectly asked something about it to select from the mcq nobody will be asked you to write the entire mechanism of action or the side effects and the pharmacology of a drug but there will be only one question say you have studied the chapter of anti parkinson drug you might be given a case a person is suffering from dash dash symptoms so you should understand that these symptoms of parkinson which is the best possible drug you will give to treat him you have to choose from the alternatives so what they are testing here is whether you know what is parkinson's disease whether you know the classification of drugs and the names to select the best answer so this is how indirectly your knowledge about your fundamental concepts of bpharm will be tested in your application skills of entrance test then the last thing that is how many hours to study daily now this is a subjective question and i would say it varies from individual to individual but making a time table and planning is very very important you cannot abruptly get up from sleep one day study for 4 hours another day you don't study anything and you go for exam planning and making a time table is important and it has to be done individually because every person has different capabilities say i tell you to study pharmacology one chapter today there might be a student who is very good in pharmacology you might finish it in 2 hours there might be someone who needs a little bit extensive reading might require 4 to 5 hours to study it so don't compare yourselves with your friends or your study mates plan your individual time table and know how much time you need to invest in a particular topic to understand it so gpat previous year paper analysis now this is where another important thing is this gives you an idea because you will say how can we predict the paper it is not said by our college teachers we don't know who is setting the paper from nta that is national testing agency they set the paper for gpat from last 3 4 years from year 2018 2019 so how are we going to make a prediction like what is important what to focus so let's compare say year 2019 and year uh, 2021 the recent last year's paper okay just uh, see the two rows of 2019 and 2021 you see in the first column of chemistry and pharm chem in year 2019 there have been 28 questions from chemistry this includes all your subjects of chemistry that is organic inorganic medicinal chemistry whatever comes under chemistry then the next column you see pharmacology and app that is anatomy you have around 32 plus 3 from anatomy that is 35 questions and then straight away see the last column of pharmaceutics where you have 18 plus 3 questions that is 18 plus 3 is 21 pe in the bracket is pharmaceutical engineering so from pharmaceutics you have been getting around 21 questions okay then go to the last row of 2021 30 questions from chemistry 34 from pharmacology 13 from zootics so this three things why i am highlighting is because these are the three important core subjects where your paper revolves see so you can add 30 plus 34 is 64 64 plus another of 13 is around 76 77 so year 2021 around 77 questions that is out of 125 half the number of questions 50% of your paper was from these three subjects same is case with 2019 you can see 28 plus 35 plus 21 again around more than 75 questions so these three subjects play an important role your 75 to 80 questions will be from these three subjects and this is the trend which is followed every year year after year and then comes your other subjects pharmacognosy microbiology clinical pharmacology or whatever biotech biopharm physical pharm so now these subjects are minor subjects but that does not mean that they are not important they are equally important you have to study for them it's not that you can skip it because you will get just two questions or three questions because every question every single mark is important to determine your rank but what you need to focus more is these three main subjects after you finish the major subjects then you can move to minor subjects say because just because you like microbiology and you might be a student like who likes microbiology it's absolutely fine but if you invest studying a huge amount of time in microbiology is it going to help you for exam 
because you might be asked only two to three questions from microbiology and in mode of studying that microbiology if you skip say on chemistry just because you are getting bored you are losing around 20 to 30 questions from chemistry so that is going to be a major loss so this is where you need to know what to study and how much to study this is niper paper analysis just as we saw for gpat now in niper there is certain differences and twist and same is applicable to other exams that is manipal bits Every exam has a little bit difference from each other, but the core fundamental topics remain the same. In NIPAD now there are 200 questions. In GPAT there are 125 questions. And the thing is, GPAT papers are available in public domain. That is, once the exam is over, results are out, you get to see the question papers. This is not the case with NIPAD. You will not get the papers in public domain. So whatever we collect the NIPAD practice papers, these are memory based. That is collected from students' feedback. So from here you get all 200 collected or you may get 80 or 100 based upon students response to the feedback. So you another addition here in NIPER is after having 200 questions, there is another introduction here is general knowledge that is GK based. So apart from your pharmacology, chemistry and all these major topics and along with the other minor subjects, you have 25 to 20 questions which will come from general knowledge based questions. So this is something you need to prepare additional for NIPER as compared to your GPAT. And I'll explain you in the further slides as well how different exams will require different ways to prepare yourself. So this is an example uh, I've picked up from our notes. That is, if you download our notes, you will be able to see. As I explained you, now this is a minor subject, anatomy pathology. Now we saw that there have been only two to three questions from APP. So if you open the book Tortora and start reading, say I tell you read this topic about uh, respiratory capacities, inspiratory volumes. How long you will take to read from Tortora? You will read that chapter at least for one or two hours and you will get bored. And how many questions you expect this one or two from entire of anatomy. So if you read 10 chapters of anatomy each for two hours, you are almost two days are gone. But you are going to be asked only two questions. Rather you invest that time in studying pharmacology, it will help you. Because pharmacology, you will, you will be having around 30 questions. So to make your task easier, we at Pharma Elite, we have done this short and concise notes. For all the minor subjects where you can expect simple easy questions and you don't have to break your head much so if you look at this one table how long do you think you need to study this maybe five minutes or ten minutes so you will finish such minor topics in a short time and it will be helpful because it will save your time for the things where you need to invest time and read books you have to do it but for things which can be done in a short manner you can finish it up like this this is another example from our notes and another thing I would like to tell you is in GPAT 2021 paper you can open and see there has been there has uh, one question was asked that is how many facial bones are present and the answer lies here in this table number of facial bones are 14 you can see the second one cranium face so 14 facial bones have, do you ever think or anyone even expected that you will get such basic level question in GPAT that how many bones are present and we tend to ignore such topics because we don't expect such things to come in exam. But yes, paper can be easy. Paper can be very basic level also. It is not that you will only get big high five concepts that will twist your questions. So if you are someone who has already read this in our notes, the student has definitely given the correct answer. Otherwise, some students have failed to attempt this question because they know that it is easy, but we can't recollect it because we have not revised it recently. It was in our lower classes. So you, this is a picture that tells you about our app. You can download the app from Play Store. If you download our app, you will be able to get the study materials, test series, video lectures. And if you have any queries regarding this, just WhatsApp on the below mentioned number, which is on the screen, where you'll get more information about it. Today, basically, I'll tell you about how you're going to prepare. Okay, so now bronchial asthma. Now in this slide, I'm going to explain you how a disease is caused in pharmacology, let it be any disease. Here we have taken example of asthma, how a disease is caused and how it is going to be treated. Now, when it comes to pharmacology, you have several diseases in your entire syllabus. Let it be malaria, tuberculosis, amoebic dysentery, diarrhea, bronchial asthma, several diseases which we study. But when it comes to entrance exam, what do you need to know? One thing you need to know is how the disease is caused. And secondly, you need to know how to treat the disease. See, never ever jump to the treatment that is one which is on the right hand side part of the screen. Always you should know first how the disease is caused. Only then you can predict how you are going to treat the disease. Because if you are not aware what is happening actually in the disease, how can you tell how to treat it? So one simple way to study is study them like this parallelly. 
first write on left hand side of your page you can make your own notes for this it will be easy for you also write on the left hand hand of your page how a disease is caused then on the right hand side you start uh, thinking how you are going to treat it now i'll explain you with the example of asthma so you see here bronchial asthma what is it basically we all have heard something about asthma right you can even type it in the chat box so that we can keep the session to be interactive whatever you know about asthma how you think asthma is caused it is basically a bronchial condition you hear people uh, getting wheezing sounds people feel uncomfortable or difficulty in breathing people are breathless all these are common signs and mostly we associate asthma with people ha having smoking habits right so basically asthma is a condition of bronchial hyperactivity which is associated with inflammation now how this inflammation occurs is because your ige antibody comes into picture we all know right there are types of antibodies a b sorry a e g and another antibody there are five types right so we know all these antibodies but one which is involved in inflammation or allergic mediation is ige and then there are uh, the antibody which crosses the placenta is igg then antibody a is for tighter antibodies so like this we have different antibodies but how the one which interacts here is ige what happens to this ige it binds to the mast cells your mast cells undergo degranulation upon this antigen antibody interaction your mast cells undergo degranulation this degranulation leads to release of mediators what are the mediators which are released you can see here the prostaglandins leukotrienes platelet activating factors histamine and protease enzymes so these are the four five mediators which are released because of the antigen antibody interaction because of the release of this mediators there occurs bronchoconstriction and gives you an attack of asthma what is constriction constriction is narrowing of the airways we all know constrict is to con that is narrow and dilate is to widen so in asthma it is basically the bronchoconstriction which occurs so we need to stop this bronchoconstriction now we got the flow right how the disease is caused now let's start thinking in the reverse direction start reading it ulta from downwards what is happening here inflammation and bronchoconstriction so if i want to treat asthma i will do the opposite of this i will give a bronchodilator right because i want to prevent constriction opposite of constriction is dilation so i will give a dilator which will stop the constriction or the next stage this mediators release are causing problem so i will take a step which will block the release of this mediators if this mediator release is only block there won't be any release of uh, further bronchoconstrictors so if mediator release is blocked further steps will not occur another thing you can do is prevent degranulation why the mediators are getting released because of degranulation right so i will again go back to the previous step i will stop this degranulation i will stop the interaction of antigen antibody so if i block one by one this all the steps which are occurring in the mechanism i will treat asthma so this is how your treatment becomes easy when you know how the disease is actually caused now look at the right hand side part of the slide prevention of antigen antibody interaction that agab is antigen antibody interaction so if i prevent antigen antibody interaction my further activities will not occur neutralize this ige antibody what is ige the one which is causing inflammation here upon binding to mast cells so if i neutralize this antibody i will treat asthma what is the drug omalizumab prevent release of mediators what do you saw in the second step mediators released are causing a problem so if i block the release of mediators there itself in this step further action will not occur suppression of inflammation or bronchial hyperactivity i will not allow any inflammation to occur antagonize of release antagonism antagonism means what oppose we know agonist and antagonist right in pharmacology basics we have studied so if i block the release of mediators that is i oppose the release of mediators there won't be any bronchoconstrictor mimicking a dilator neurotransmitter mimic means what to act or to copy so i will act like a dilator i will give a drug which acts like a dilator that is sympathomimetics or i can give directly acting bronchodilator that is methylxanthines when you are giving dilator the constrictor action will be prevented so as i know how the disease is caused i can easily study how the treatment is caused so this is how pharmacology can be made easy and interesting on this slide we can see four structures of quinolones now i would like to ask you all in the audience what do you see now all they are quinolones that is why we have grouped them together 
i will tell you how to study structural based medicinal chemistry topics in a easy manner without having the fear because as a semester student what is our worry how to write so many structures how to remember i may forget i may confuse so how are you going to remember all this for your entrance exam is a very easy thing but first i would like to ask you all what are the structural similarities that you see in all four of these as you all know that they are quinolones can anyone tell me what do you find structurally similar or structurally different similarities and differences you can type in the chat box what do you see similar among them observe all the four structures carefully and tell me what are the structural similarities what functional groups are present okay so main thing is they all being quinolone there is a quinolin ring which is common in all four of these now what is this quinolin ring is the one which we see in the center actually i am unable to use the pointer from my end otherwise i could have highlighted and shown so this is the quinolin ring which is present in all four you can see this one benzene ring fused with another ring that is the quinolin ring which is the main core structure it is having nitrogen at the first position so that we name as position number 1 and when we start numbering from that nitrogen in a anti clockwise direction since i'm unable to use the pointer i cannot highlight it here so 1 2 3 4 like this will start numbering being nitrogen as the first one so then third position we get carboxylic acid group in all four of these structures we are seeing c double bond o o h what is c double bond o o h it is a carboxylic acid group then at the fourth position in all of these we are having double bond o that is carbonyl group that is a keto group okay then you move to the fifth and sixth position sixth is where the fluorine group lies so all these quinolones are having fluorine at sixth position and then now you will say that all of them are having quinolone all have carboxylic all have a ketone and a fluoro group so how to differentiate now look at the nitrogen that is the first one in all four position all the four structures see the first one that is n you see here in nor fluoxacin n alkyl chain is present right n and you see a line that indicates two carbon atom indicating an ethyl because two carbon meaning ethane so this n alkyl chain will be ethyl chain then in ciprofloxacin you have you see that what is attached to n is a cyclic structure a three carbon atom cyclic structure that is cyclopropyl similar is case with sparfloxacin and getifloxacin they also have cyclopropyl three carbon atom triangular structure since it is cyclic we call it cyclo three carbons so propane that is propyl now again what is the differentiating feature is only norfloxacin doesn't have this cyclopropyl it has an n alkyl chain but all others have cyclopropyl so again how to differentiate in these three then let's look for some other features you see in sparfloxacin there is another fluorine group at eighth position and such a fluorine group is not present in any other structures all have only one fluoro at sixth position whereas sparfloxacin is the only one which has two fluoros at six as well as eight so and the only structure is sparfloxacin so if you are given a question to identify sparfloxacin you should look for all the common features that is quinolin ring then the carboxylic group the carbonyl group fluoro group and again another fluoro group that is two fluoros so only quinolone which is having two fluoros is sparfloxacin then if you look at getifloxacin at the eighth position you having och3 that is methoxy group such a methoxy group is not present in any of the other structures so the one which has eight methoxy will be your answer for getty floxacin so questions can be in two ways one thing is you are given four structures and told to identify say i have given you these four and i have told you to identify the structure for sparfloxacin or you have been given four iupac names and told to identify the correct name say for getty floxacin so i will look which is having one cyclopropyl six fluoro then eight methoxy because i know that getty floxacin has eight methoxy and Of quinolin 3 carboxylic acid because it is a common feature so in the given options i will look for only the functional substituents i am nowhere by hating the structure i am not going to draw the structure 100 times and practice it there is no question of forgetting the structure or the name i will just compare and contrast the given names and structures 
identify the similarities and differences and study it this is how medicinal chemistry can be made easy i hope you all have understood i'm unable to see any replies in chat box so if anyone is having doubt please uh, feel free to post it or you can tell me at the end as well next we'll look at sar now what do we study in sar in our theory exam or semesters we write sar as a long answer question because we expect to get 10 marks or whatever is allotted to us but in your entrance preparation how you are going to study sar so sar based questions are uh, like i'm not saying it may not come but there is a rare chance of such questions coming but it is very easy so first thing uh, draw the structure on the center of your notebook as i have taken here example of chloramphenicol let it be any drug let it be aspirin let it be whichever drug you have taking propranolol that sar is very typical so draw the structure in a big handwriting at the center of your page put up arrows as i have shown on this slide put up the arrows and write the points what we basically study in sar is how the structural similarities and differences occur that is whether you can replace the group whether you can shift it to some other position can you uh, shift it from ortho to para can you put an electron donating group can you put a withdrawing group these are all the aspects which we look in sar so on the points that you knew about sar you write them on one page don't write it in paragraph or a point form to read two pages draw the structure and on the same page put arrows and mention the points which are very important and only study those so that you can finish one sar of one drug in 5 minutes next okay now synthesis now this is an example i have taken here is of dapsone let this applies to all other drugs and any other drug you study in chemistry so basically when it comes to our uh, exams what we do in semesters how we study synthesis we have to first write the reaction we write the name of reactants then we write the, the intermediates we do a step by step mechanism right first we'll write reaction then i'll write mechanism step 1 step 2 intermediates transition state and then the final product we derive it with the entire three four steps mechanism so that is why because we get 10 marks for that answer but here in entrance exam nobody will ask you the mechanism nobody is going to question you what is the intermediate how many intermediates are used nothing what you need to know is this table what you can see on the screen name of the drug starting material and reagents used reagents also only if it is a very specific agent so your synthesis is to be studied in a tabular format for entrance exam now you will think ma'am how do we study entrance uh, synthesis that is organic chemistry or a medicinal chemistry in a table format so that is the thing that is the key point here see the structure of dapsone is shown to you all on the screen that is the end product it is having two uh, amino groups you can see here di amino two phenyl groups di phenyl sulfone what is sulfone s double bond o s double bond o this is the end product but now my question is if you are asking entrance exam dash compound is used as a starting material to synthesize dapsone so i just need to know what is the name of my starting material which might be already given in options or four structures might be given and i have to select one so i can guess the structure of the reactant based upon the structure of product for that i need to know at least a rough idea how dapsone looks like now i know that it is diamino diphenyl sulfone so somewhere my reactant has to have the amino group my reactant should have a benzene ring with a sulfur so you move to the first uh, first structure on this slide you can see here what is the structure can anyone tell me the name of the first structure which is there in the first box dash that is x compound reacting with sodium sulfide that is na2s can you tell me what is the name how you will name it because that is what is your answer is what is used as a starting material to synthesize dapsone i just need to know that this reaction mechanism is explained for your reference for entrance exam i just need to know the first box can anyone tell me how are you going to name the first compound Yes, para chloro nitro benzene. Okay. So as they are one four, you can call it one four or you can call it para. Both ways are correct. So you understand it that it is para nitro chloro benzene. On the order of priority, we name it in this way: para nitro chloro benzene or four nitro chloro benzene. So this compound reacts with sodium sulfide, and we are taking two molecules of the reactant. 
sulfur acts as a connecting moiety your chlorine moves out with sodium as sodium chloride and you get the second structure which is in the second box now what i understood that i got sulfur i got two phenyl rings now this nitro has to go to amino so what i will do i will under, the compound will undergo uh, reduction right in this step you can see here it reacts with stannous chloride and hcl your nitro gets converted to no2 gets converted to nh2 and here when you use potassium chromate it is an oxidizing agent your sulfur gets converted to sulfone that is you add oxygen so this is just a roughly explained mechanism you don't need it for entrance exam you just need to know the starting material and the end product if you can remember the reagents used well and good if you cannot then also the first two columns are important the name of your drug that is your end product and your starting material once you know the name automatically you can predict the structure same will apply to the next one sulfur diazine let it be any drug which you are using in your synthesis make this table in your notebook i would suggest you start it today itself so that whenever you are studying chemistry and you come across any synthesis you go on adding the names to this list so that by the end when you prepare for gpat your list the table will be already complete you don't have to go and start searching what i need to add as you study every day keep updating the list okay so this is something which is a very typical and the most easiest question you can get in paper pro drug and its active form there are no big concepts behind this it is just a memory based question i would say what what do you mean by pro drug can anyone tell me i'm just explaining here but actually in exam nobody is going to ask you the concept what is a pro drug and its active form have you ever heard about the term pro drug uh, or the ones who are in third years at least you might have heard about pro drug in pharmacology medicinal chemistry so pro drug is something which is inactive and once the drug enters in your body and reaches the target site of action it gets converted to active form yes very correct neha so you know the concept of pro drug right how the drug will become in gets converted from inactive form to active form this is what your pro drug means this is just for your understanding for your exam what will be asked dash is a pro drug of enalapril dash is a pro drug of proguanil uh, sorry active form of proguanil active form of levodopa so you just need to select the correct option and it is already given so this kind of table again you have to make as i said you can make a table for synthesis you can make this table as well it is also available in our notes as well in pharma highlight so as you study one by one chapters from uh, pharmacology and medicinal chemistry go on adding examples to this list i think someone is unmuted can you please check anyone so as you go on studying one by one topics for your uh, pharmacology go on adding examples to this list people don't if you start searching then no you will get bored and find it difficult but eventually as you read keep adding to this and it is very easy to remember see proguanil cycloguanil bicampicillin ampicillin enalapril enalaprilate the names and the rhyming is very much easy so if you just read this like you don't have to take hours together to study it whenever you're bored you're having a free time you can just scroll through the list then also it is more than enough because you just need to know the examples and select the correct answer and if you at least one or two questions are sure short questions from pro drugs and active form for let it be a gpat niper or manipal entrance test you will get one or two questions from this so this is the area where you can score marks easily and you should not lose marks if such easy questions are asked next so we know that whether you are going to appear for gpat right now or you are going to appear for gpat in your next year that is 2022 2023 wherever it is our target is set that we have to get the best rank of 500 marks and all india rank 01 now that your target is set you will think how am i going to achieve this target so next please how to achieve this 500 marks now most important thing is identify which are your strong and weak areas now what do i mean by strong and weak areas strong areas is something where you are thoroughly prepared you know all the concepts and your preparation is done and weak areas is somewhere where you need improvement say and you will come to know the strong and weak areas only when you practice question papers as i mentioned you in the beginning of question session 
start practicing question papers because only when you practice question papers you will come to know where you are if you never practice papers you will always feel that yes i am done mera padhai hua hai and i can best appear for the exam but if you practice papers you will realize say i might feel that i am full confident i have studied everything but if i go to appear a practice paper i realize that i am not able to solve questions say from biochemistry or i am not able to tackle questions from say cognacy so i understand that my weak areas are these subjects and i need to improve on them whereas if you don't practice paper and directly go for exam i will realize these things on the day of exam when it is already too late and you cannot do anything in those 3 hours so once you identify your weak areas you can plan plan with big and small steps know how you are going to improve yourself take help from your friends from your faculties or mentors and know how you will prepare then are my strong areas having more weightage for the respective exams now what do i mean by weightage as i showed you all the paper analysis say you saw that pharmacology chemistry and zootics these three play a major role so if that is your strong area yes you have an advantage because out of 125 at least 70 to 75 questions will come from these subjects but if this is not your strong area say you are someone who doesn't like chemistry or finds chemistry difficult it is your weak zone you cannot ignore it you need to take actions to improve this weak zone of yours because it is going to be a major part of your paper test paper solving and its analysis as i said earlier only when you solve papers you will come to know where you need improvement if you never solve you will always be under the impression that i have studied i know everything and tracking your progress is important it is not just that you have to solve paper and leave track yourself monitor your progress that is where you were last week where you are this week and what is your target the next slide please so now we see this are the previous year gpat cutoffs now what i want to show you from this see cut off is something which is a minimum score okay it is not our target anymore because cut off is for the people who just want to qualify gpat but our target is what we should get the best rank and why cut off is it i would say it is a dangerous situation because see you see here every year cut off is increasing it is not that all the papers were of same difficulty level some were average some were easy some were difficult but every year the cut off is increasing in year 2020 it was 163 last year it was 186 and see this is out of 500 this is 186 for open category if you belong to any reservation categories your cut off will vary accordingly but don't be under that impression that okay just targeting this much is sufficient for me to clear because you never know what can be the situation how well prepared are your competitors say this is just a prediction in year 2022 say the cut off goes to 200 it might so happen that i have just prepared for 200 luck by chance i qualify if the cut off goes to 190 say on a lesser side okay i'll qualify just with a small gap but what if the cut off goes to 220 because we never know this is just a prediction and it can be wrong so if it the cut off goes to 220 and i just set with an assumption of 200 i'm not even going to qualify the exam forget about getting a rank so this is where targeting cut off puts you in danger zone because it is just an predictable assumption so always target the best that is 500 marks because if you target 500 marks at least you will reach 400 to 450 because you have best put in your efforts you will not be in this 200 ka danger zone if you reach 400 450 definitely you will be in top 100 ranks in india the next thing that seen the right side of the screen these are the rankers only again i'll uh, explain with the example these are pharma elite rankers one student got first rank 8 rank 13 19 and so on but what you see here the score of the topper you see first rank 315 eighth rank 293 you see their ranks are differing by 8 but their marks are differing hugely and as we move further see the last three ranks 96 328 and 500 you will say there is a huge difference this person is having a two digit rank of 96 he is within top 100 the further people are 328 and the other one is at 500 but you see the difference in their marks 243 213 and 200 just the difference of 20 to 30 marks between the last two people so you can see this 213 and 200 that is only 13 marks ka difference but the difference in the rank you see 328 and 500 their ranks are differing very much greatly by more than 100 so a difference of 10 to 12 marks can make a difference of more than 100 ranks what you will feel when you appear for exam me and my friend both of us attempted 100 questions say we'll get both of us will get around similar ranks but that may not be the case because you might get 90 correct from 100 there might be a person who gets all 100 correct 
and your rank will differ hugely that is why every single marks count and every single mark is important don't be afraid with the fear of negative marking but at the same time plan wisely and attempt so next yeah so what after gpat once you have cleared gpat you have an option to go for niper you can further you can pursue your job phd business these are the further aspects we can discuss later firstly i would like to tell you about niper so next slide so different entrance exams will require your preparation to be slightly different now what is the difference in gpat niper or any other entrance exams as i told you gpat consists of 125 questions the time duration for gpat is 3 hours that is you get 3 hours to solve this 125 questions along with negative marking as i said minus 1 the questions are superficial sometimes very easy questions as i said number of facial bones so what is such a basic and easy question it was so in gpat your some important topics are to be focused and the paper can be basic level as well but when it comes to niper preparation the things change same applies to manipal as well you get 200 questions now you will say the number of questions have increased from 125 to 200 but your time is not increasing it is not remaining the same but in uh, but it is decreasing you just have 2 hours for 200 questions in niper as well as in manipal prepare entrance test and also there is negative marking the questions here are again basic application type and gk based questions so this is something additional different from the gpat preparation but first make your gpat preparation strong once you are done with gpat you have another 3 4 months in your hand now this year the exam is very much delayed but otherwise in a general scenario gpat is in january or february and all these entrance exams that is in niper bits manipal all these exams are in june or july after your 8 semester end sem exam so you have after january you have 3 to 4 months in your hand to prepare for these different topics similar will be this year even though you are appearing gpat now you might have all these exams in july or august so after you prepare for gpat your core subjects are done right because you are preparing very much in detail for all the topics so you just have to revise them again you don't have to do an in depth study and in the remaining time left you can study gk you can study synonyms antonyms and in intelligent question based questions because this is something which is different which you did not do for gpat and you need to do for other entrance test and one of the important criteria for niper entrance test is you have to be gpat qualified that is why this exam is after gpat if you are not gpat qualified you are not eligible for niper entrance test forget about getting admission just to fill the form that is niper jwe entrance test only the students who are qualified gpat irrespective of your rank your qualification to gpat is a mandatory criteria to fill application form for niper if you have not gpat qualified you cannot sit for niper exam once you don't sit for the exam further your admission process is not going to work but just to appear for the entrance test you have to be gpat qualified so that is the level of importance gpat is considered but when it comes to manipal entrance test gpat is not a compulsory criteria if you have qualified gpat well and good you have an advantage but if you have not qualified gpat then also you can fill the form for manipal entrance test it is popularly known as met entrance test in this entrance test again you have similar like niper gk based and other different topics and you have to uh, prepare for all these exams after you fill the form you can download the syllabus copy from the respective websites that is you will get uh, the syllabus which they prescribe sorry not prescribe which they propose for the entrance exams so based on the syllabus you will understand what you did for gpat and what is different that you need to do it now so for manipal preparation gpat is not compulsory but yes if you qualify you have an advantage how what is the advantage i'll tell you see for gpat once you qualify gpat you get a stipend from government it is 12400 rupees per month and this stipend you get till you do your masters that is for two years so those who are gpat qualified one thing is you are considered first for admission as compared to the ones who have not qualified secondly you are eligible for niper thirdly you get a stipend those who are not qualified will not get a stipend yes next slide another thing is ict mtech preparation now you will think what is mtech with regards to pharma we all are pharmacists we are going to do in pharma so ict mtech is nothing related to engineering it is related to mtech in pharma technology and the advantage here is this exam has just 50 questions whereas you saw that niper and manipal has 200 questions ict mtech is having only 50 questions 
since there are 50 questions you get just one hour to solve this paper and there is no negative marking i think this is the only entrance test which gives you advantage that there is no negative marking whereas all other exams there will be negative marking so when there is no negative marking what is the fear and you have just 50 questions so you can easily attempt all these 50 questions and get the best score again ict mtech you need to go through their syllabus it is conducted by ict the main branch based in mumbai they have two more branches in bhubaneswar and jalna ICT does have an MPharm course like we have in all of the colleges, but the admission to ICT MPharm is purely based on GPAT merit. That is, you have to be in top ranks, I guess, in top 10 or top 20 ranks of GPAT itself, the seats get full. So if you have not qualified, if you have qualified GPAT, you can try for MPharm, but if you have not qualified GPAT, yet you want to go to ICT, you have ICT MTech option. Your GPAT qualification is not compulsory, but your ICT MTech score is important. What you score in this entrance test will decide your admission basis. Next is BITS. As we saw Manipal being a private university, BITS is another private university, whereas NIFAR and ICT are government. So BITS again has 100 questions, 33% negative marking, and similar things that is synonyms, antonyms, GK based questions. So every exam has certain similarities and certain differences. And I would suggest you all to appear for all the possible exams and all possible courses where you are interested. Keep all doors of opportunities open for yourself. See, if you just restrict yourself to only bits or if you restrict yourself to only NIFAR, you will keep your options limited and you never know how the competition and situation will change. So what if you don't get into that? So keep all the options open and then choose the best possible one of your choice. So next slide. Now, why NIPER? Why are we emphasizing more on NIPER? See, NIPER is a government institute and it is one of the most prestigious institute in India, I would say, in field of pharmacy education. NIPER has seven branches, as you see on the slide. Mohali, Hyderabad, Ahmedabad, Raibareli, Guwati, Hajipur, and Kolkata. These seven branches are of NIPER. And NIPER advantage is, it is the only institute which offers you an MS degree in pharma. All other colleges, including Manipal, Bits, or any other college in India, including your present college where you are studying, we all will be getting MPharm degrees. Whereas if you are interested in getting an MS degree, as we hear our friends or relatives going abroad to pursue their MS. If you want to do MS in pharma, you have it in India itself. NIPA gives you an MS degree in whichever subject you want, say pharmacology, pharmaceutics, chemistry, analysis, all options, just as MPharm, but you are getting an MS degree. Another important advantage of NIPER is you are getting a stipend because when you are going NIPER, only when you are GPAT qualified. So as you have qualified GPAT, the government is giving you a stipend which is 12,400 rupees per month. You can calculate and see 12,400 per month into 24 months because it is a two year course. So around 1.98 or 1.99 you are getting as a stipend and NIPER being a government institute, the fees are very minimum. That is for your MS course, you will be charged around 1.5 to 2 lakhs for your two years of MS course, so including all your hostel and all other expenses and just plus or minus a bit based upon how you are living your life. Around 2 lakhs will be your expenses and you are already getting an approximate similar stipend. So I don't think education remains a financial burden if you get into NIPERS. Whereas if you go to any private universities, you have to pay a bit more because the fees are on higher side. Another advantage for NIPER is they offer great placements and packages. The industry exposure is very good. Right from starting from minimum of 4 to 5 lakhs, the site, uh, salary packages go as high as to 12 LPA. As a fresher also, there have been students who have been getting 12 LPA from NIPER Mohali, NIPER Hyderabad. And NIPER has MS as well as Farm MBA. Farm MBA is some booming field as well as Manipal has the option of pharm, uh, pharmaceutical administration or pharmacy management, currently what I am pursuing. So if you are someone who is not interested in core pharma subjects, that is you don't want to work in labs, you don't want to do pharmaceutics, chemistry, ecology, and you're interested in a management job, then pharm MD or pharm administration, that is department of management is your choice. And there is no entrance uh, criteria that you have to clear CAT, ZAT, SAT, all those are for Core MBA branches. For our farm MBA, Manipal accepts the score of MET entrance test and NIPER accepts the score of NIPER JEE. So when you appear for this exam, you are keeping your option open for your MS, MPharm as well as for farm MBA. So with the same entrance test, you can enter into field of MBA as well, that is farm MBA. Next. 
now we'll see different heterocycles now you will see so many structures coming up on this screen now when it comes to uh, semester exams what do you do you study all the structures we by heart them somehow we make tricks and codes to remember them and already you you might get scared looking at so many structures how do i remember them i'll forget it on the day of exam but when it comes to entrance exam your job is made simple you're not going to draw the structure you're not going to write anything 100 times then what will be asked it is very simple your indirectly knowledge will be tested that is whether you know what the structure is see i am asking you a question name an anti ulcer drug as you see on the slide anyone will tell me if i ask you an example name an anti ulcer drug you will immediately say simitidine and ranitidine but my question will be name an anti ulcer drug which has an imidazole ring so here my knowledge whether i know heterocycle rings whether i know what is anti ulcer and its example three things are being tested in one question name an anti ulcer with a furan ring so if you just know the examples ranitidine and simitidine but you don't know which heterocycle is present in which one then you will not understand the question so this is how indirectly your knowledge is tested without drawing the structures so next slide this is a table again as we made table for synthesis pro drugs you can make this another table see i told you already to make two tables this is the third one you can do write the name of heterocycles write the name of drugs and the therapeutic category you can do this for entire pharmacology okay not only anti ulcers anti virals anti malarials anti cholinergics whatever topics you are studying all the categories identify the drugs identify the heterocycle rings which are present and make this table say my question is name an anti malarial drug which is having a quinoline ring the second last one you can see on this slide anti malarial with a quinoline ring chloroquine but i just know suppose anti malarial is chloroquine but i don't know what is the ring present then i will find this question tricky this is why how you will indirectly relate your knowledge of heterocycles from chemistry to your pharmacology next another typical question which comes from the subject of pharmaceutics that is drug excipient interactions this is something which is very commonly asked the first one itself you can see maillard reaction those who have already solved papers or gone through books like pearson and inamdar you might have already heard about it maillard reaction what happens in maillard reaction it is your excipient that is lactose while making tablets we use lactose right you must have studied formulations in suitics dispensing so what is lactose it is widely used as a diluent disintegrant binder various purposes so when you add lactose to your tablet formulation but if your drug is an amine containing drug that is if it is an isoniazid a primary amine or a secondary amine like fluoxetine and you interact with lactose you get a discoloration of tablet this particular interaction is known as maillard reaction so i need to know such typical drug excipient interactions and this are fixed it has already happened you cannot have any uh, changes in this so such things where you get easy questions that is chloramphenicol if it interacts with silica what will happen polymorph transition or transformation happens so these are the typical interactions which have already occurred and they will remain the same it is a memory based questions as i as i told about pro drugs you don't have to think much if you know it you can straight away mark the answer in 2 seconds and you can easily score marks in such questions So next, now I'll tell you about named reactions. This is from organic chemistry. You must have already studied in your semesters. How we do? Again, as we did for uh, uh, this synthesis, that is reaction mechanism. How we did that way? We do it again for named reactions. But for your entrance test, again, your job is easy because you will be already given things. You just have to select. Now, what we need to do here is, if you are asked a given compound dash. undergoes wolfkeschner's reaction predict its product so i know that it is already undergoing wolfkeschner's i can see the reactant on my question paper screen so i just need to know what is the product that is i need to know what happens in wolfkeschner's reduction so wolfkeschner's reduction basically will involve conversion of carbonyl group of your aldehyde or a ketone to a methylene group by heating their hydrazones semi carbazones azines in presence of a strong base so i don't need to know what is this all statements mechanism because i'm not going to write a theory exam so i just know that my aldehyde or a ketone that is c double bond o the carbonyl has to get converted to methylene ch2 what happens in between is not my concern for entrance exam so c double bond o to ch2 this is what happens in wolfkeschner's reduction 
so whether i know the structure or i don't know i will see what is given in the question i will draw the same one just i will replace that c double bond o with ch2 so you can see on the next uh, yellow box r2 c double bond o the intermediate all the steps in my product i will again write r2 instead of c double bond o i will make it to ch2 the next one third yellow box you can see c6 h5 twice c double bond o undergoes wolf kirchner's reaction predict the product i don't know what is wolf kirchner's i'm not going to break my head for mechanism but i know that i have to convert c double bond o to ch2 so i will blindly copy paste the reactant c6 h5 twice i will copy it in the product i will make c double bond o to ch2 i get my answer another example the animation another example you can see here camphor undergoes camphene so this camphor i don't know what is the structure of camphor but it is given to me in the question right so i will just copy it c double bond o this is undergoing wolf kirchner's reduction so i will make it to ch2 and you get the product camphene the since it is hydrogens we have not drawn it so this is how you have to study name reactions for entrance obviously for your semester exams you have to study in detail there is no shortcut to that but for your entrance when you are doing quick revisions you study name reactions like this reactant product next next we'll see cognacy now cognacy is another subject like some people like it some people find it boring or some people tend to get confused in cognacy what are important is alkaloids glycosides uh, tannins resins and volatile oils these four five topics play a major important role and questions asked from pharmacology are around 5 to uh, pharmacognosy are around 5 to 10 we don't get much huge number of questions but 5 to 10 is also very important you cannot leave it so what do you need to know about any ph uh, pharmacognostic chapter one thing is you need to know their classification their detection and identification tests uh, the family in cognosy there is something called as family and any specific use about that drug so when it comes to alkaloids what do you see here is wagner's test mayer's test pecric acid test hager's test all these are different tests which are used to identify so what i will be asked is name the test which is used to identify or detect alkaloids and i will be given four options say mayer's wagner's hager's regendorf's so my answer will be all of the above if all four are given or if you might be asked something specific about the reagent say hager's test is carried out and what is the color change you know that hager's is picric so if picric acid is added we already know picric acid gives a peculiar yellow orange color it stains your hands you might have seen in chemistry lab what is the color of picric or if i am asked wagner's test iodine potassium iodide so what is the color change once you know that it is iodine it will give you a reddish brown color if you know that dragon drops is potassium bismuth since it is potassium bismuth iodide iodide mean again i will get a brownish color so yeah, i just need to know the name of the test and the reagent composition next classification now how classification from pharmacognosy is important we saw how classification comes from pharmacology now we'll see pharmacognosy this is an example from alkaloids same applies to glycosides volatile oils resins tannins all the chapters now how they will indirectly ask you about uh, classification and it will test your knowledge regarding the use drug and the heterocycle again as we saw from medicinal chemistry anti ulcer with furan anti ulcer with imidazole here you might be asked say i'll pick up the example of raulfia now the typical use of raulfia is it is used as an anti hypertensive that is to treat hypertension high blood pressure so now you all know that raulfia is used as an anti hypertensive but my question will be name an indole alkaloid which is used to treat hypertension and you will keep thinking what is an indole alkaloid you might know that the answer is raulfia but if you doesn't know if you don't know that raulfia belongs to indole category you will not get to know this answer or you might be asked name a cns stimulant which is a purine alkaloid now you will think what is a cns stimulant cns stimulants are what tea coffee caffeine all these are cns stimulants they keep you awake right stimulating your cns system so if you know the use if i had directly given tea coffee in the option everyone would have understood but i am asking you cns stimulant which is a purine alkaloid so i am testing whether you know what are the examples what are the classes what are the heterocycles and their uses next slide okay this is a typical thing another thing that can come from pharmacognosy with regards to synonyms and family now why the synonyms and family is important 
see we are studying about ephedra and the typical use you see in the last column ephedra use used as an anti inflammatory agent so if i ask you a question name an anti inflammatory agent and in the options you see ephedra you will easily mark but if the question will be twisted name an anti inflammatory agent and in the option you will find synonyms you will keep searching for ephedra and you will see the question is wrong or I, maybe i skipped it i didn't study but the question is correct the answer is mahang if the synonyms are given so always you may not find directly the name of the drug you may find even the synonyms given in the alternatives so you need to study the drug its use its synonyms and family as well because the question can be name a drug from ephedra c family which is used as an anti hypertensive and the option lies in the synonyms given so this is how your pharmacognosy can be done next we'll see what are the strategies to be followed now we have already done at how we are going to study and prepare for the exam how many question papers to solve what are the way to practice question papers now i'll tell you exactly how you are going to solve question papers that is you have to solve paper in three parts now what you will do meaning solving papers in three parts next on our portal i'll show you there are three ways to solve mcqs first is where you will where you're sure mark the correct answer second is elimination and third is logical i'll explain you on next slide what is elimination and logical so this is a picture of a screen uh, shared from our portal same will come for your entrance exam let it be gpat or any other entrance test you get the question you will get the four alternatives on your screen and the right hand side you can see the question pellet that is you see all the questions which appear so first thing when you get the question paper is first go through all the questions in a hurry no don't start attempting them at least for gpat you have 3 hours and just 125 questions so the time is very much sufficient in nifer and manipal entrances so there is time constraint your speed and accuracy is important because you have only 2 hours for 200 questions here you have 3 hours so you can utilize the time wisely first read the question chargaff's rule is in relation to dash read all the four options don't just go on jump it rdna atgc dna carbohydrates and proteins so say i feel the answer is atgc i will select on option b and i will click on save and next the one which is at the bottom of the screen always remember that you have to click on save and next if you don't click on save and next then you will your answer will not get saved say i mark it even though my answer is correct and i forgot to click on this save and from the question palette i randomly click on question number 2 or i decide to go on question number 10 then my first answer will not be saved and what will be my assumption that i marked it correctly i know it but it will not get saved unless you click on save and next so never ever jump to any question randomly without clicking on save and next or suppose say you are not sure about the question you can click on the option mark for review which is at the left side so if you click on mark for review that question number will be appearing in a different color in this question palette see the ones which are not answered will appear red answered ones will go green and the ones which do not appear that is you have flagged them will appear in some other orange or blue color and ones which you have marked for review once you have not marked for review you will get different colors and this is same on the portal as well as for your entrance exams uh, the first start of your exam they will give you an information box in that it will be mentioned what will be the color changes so go through that properly and never ever click on submit or end paper in a hurry first you check there what you have attempted because if you have forgotten this click and save next you will feel that you attempted 80 questions but you will if you see this number of answered questions green sections you might see only 20 so that means 60 are not saved and it is going to be a major loss so don't click submit in a hurry first see that legend box at the bottom how many answered not answered marked for review go through it once again see if you can make any more changes or if you have anything left to do once you are 100% sure then click on submit So next and this is on the portal that once you submit you don't have to wait for anyone to manually approve your paper it automatically gets submitted and you get the answer sheet that is the question response you will come to know whether your answer was right or wrong if it is correct you will get the marks if it is wrong you will get the explanation if you if you click on the solution can someone check the mic please if you click on the solution box you will get the explanation that is whether your answer was right or wrong you can go through the solution box if you don't understand it you can read the explanation and another important thing is compare report in this compare report so next 
on the compare report option you can compare your score with that of the topper so this is an advantage to build competitive spirit say on the portal we are 100 students solving this paper today and among this 100 i got 83rd rank so i know that within 100 only i'm 83 so what will be my position when i'm com competing with 50000 students in india so this helps you predict your position where you are standing and where you need to move ahead so this is how paper solving helps you one thing is you get time management you know how much to solve how fast you can or where you need to improve you get a report you get the solutions as well as you can compare your report next yeah now i'll explain you the paper solving strategy as i said elimination way of solving and solving when you're sure so you get 125 questions in three hours so all animations please so you see the paper 125 and say you find 35 questions which are unknown say you find the first 35 questions only which are fearful and you might get a doubt that i don't know this please do not get nervous or panic it's absolutely all right there might be questions which you don't know so leave this 35 questions aside and maybe there are other 90 questions which are waiting for you what you have studied from these 90 questions i leave this 35 okay don't get scared you may not know things it's not that you should know everything in this world but you are in a learning phase so leave this 35 for now it's not that you're leaving them completely you will come back to it later go to the next 90 questions from this 90 i find 50 questions which i am sure as i mentioned on the previous slide mark what you are sure about so i will first solve these 50 questions which answers i know and i will attempt them because i'm sure i have studied that then i get another 40 questions where i'm having some confusion whether the answer is a or b whether it is c or d so out of this confusion you cannot leave it because you saw right how every question and every mark is important if you miss one two questions also you will feel that your marks are differing by 5 10 but your rank will differ by hundreds so with this confusion of fear of negative marking don't leave the paper here solve it you have to take a planned calculative risk and not a blind risk say i attempt this 40 questions and i get 10 questions correct and 30 wrong out of my confusion and 10 correct means what 10 into 4 40 marks and 30 wrong means minus 30. so what you will say in spite of getting 40 marks my 30 are going in negative and i'm getting a net gain of only 10 marks so is it going to help yes it will help even though not greatly but it will help because 10 marks will also cause a huge difference in that whereas there might be other students whose situation might be exactly opposite in this zone of 40 confusions that person gets only 10 negative and 30 correct see if it is opposite 30 correct means 30 into 4 120 120 minus 10 wrong means minus 10 and 110 so you get only 10 positive that is 10 marks more but that person gets 110 marks more by taking this risk of 40 questions why because he or she has practiced their preparation is better and they know how to take a planned calculative risk and not a blind risk so you should lie in the zone of getting maximum correct and minimum negative and once you're confident that this 50 sure questions plus not the 10 but i'm getting 110 so 50 into 4 is what 200 200 plus 110 is 310 i already have 310 marks fixed in my pocket then i will go to these 35 questions about which are unknown because 310 is definitely a good score i'm qualifying the exam then i can take a risk for this unknown question and think about it some apply some logic try to recollect if you know something in and around the topic or make a little bit of tricky assumptions but if you are not at all aware don't blindly mark all 35 because if you get all wrong the score which you have gained in this half you will lose it so from 35 say you can attempt some 10 15 with having some logic or understanding so this is how you're going to solve paper smartly next slide and this look at the last four that is all four students who have attempted 100 questions so you have four friends from your class who have attempted 100 what you will feel we all attempted 100 we all will get a similar score it's not that you see the last column 200 250 300 350 the scores can differ greatly in spite of all of you are attempting 100 what is the difference is where you're getting in wrong how many correct and how many negatives your end score will vary and if your score is just 200 250 your rank will be 500 and 1500 that huge will be the difference in your rank this is where every single mark and every single question which you attempt is important next 
to all the animations now and so after listening to me for last one hour and already the questions which might be in your mind that is can i crack gpat what rank will i get how should i prepare am i capable it's always possible remember anything and everything is possible it's all about your perception it's not always that success stories have come from the greatest rank what do i mean by this is there have been students who have been along with us at pharma elite who have been my friends even i myself was a part of it we all have like it's not that we always got the best rank we have come from a three digit or two digit rank to a single digit rank say three digit rank 999 rank in gpat and that person reached to a two digit rank in manipal or bits entrance or sniper rank 20 or rank 10 so it's only your efforts your smart work it's not only hard work because everyone does hard work you have to work smartly it is your perception belief and smart work which can make you reach to your target that is all india rank 01 so i hope you all understood what i explained that is it from my side for today and now i leave the session open to you all for any questions any queries so that i can address your doubts one by one if you want me to repeat anything also please do let me know i'll be more than happy to repeat it the session is open to all the participants yeah thank you shrishti for the informative talk so now the platform is open for question and answers or uh, i request the participants uh, to ask the questions directly your microphone has been enabled or you can also post the questions in the chat box yes any doubts any queries you want you can ask unmute or you can even type in the chat box i hope you all have understood if anything needs to be repeated also you can tell see uh, questions to prepare for exam someone has posted a doubt you can best thing you can do is practice previous year question papers which are already available in inam dar textbook as well as you can get them on our pharma elite portal on our app when you practice previous year papers you will get an idea what is the level or how the questions appear for entrance test in pharmacognosy main important thing is classification the drug name synonym family which they belong and the typical use and diagnostic test that is identification test morphology is not that greatly asked in entrance test it is more important for your theory and practical what is focused in entrance test is as i explained you with the example of alkaloids mainly study classification synonyms family and a typical use which is associated with that drug if you open pearson also you will get an idea how cognosy can be studied yes any doubts i'm even posting up the feedback form in the chat box so you can fill up the feedback form that will help us to improve the possibilities regarding getting questions is we cannot directly tell how much will come but overall chemistry you will have around 30 questions from that you might expect two to three questions from nomenclature if overall is 30 you might get two to three from nomenclature specifically and i hope how to study nomenclature in a easy manner was clear to you i have already explained it so i don't think that should be a burden like how you feel for your semester students please make sure that you fill up the feedback form it is already being posted in the chat box so i think uh, that's the only questions we have Okay. I request the participants to kindly fill the feedback form. So now, uh, let's move on towards the vote of thanks. 
So it is my honor and privilege to conclude this session by extending a vote of thanks. First of all, we are very much thankful to the management, Honorable Vice Chancellor Sir and Pro Vice Chancellor Sir for their continuous encouragement and support in conducting webinars. On behalf of all the faculty members of Department of Pharmacology, I thank our Dean, Dr. S. Bharat, for his proactiveness and valuable guidance. On behalf of Department of Pharmacology, Faculty of Pharmacy, and all the participants, I profusely thank Mishrishti uh, for uh, delivering this talk. I would also like to convey my sincere appreciation to our department faculty members for their support and cooperation throughout the process and arrangement to successfully conduct this webinar. On my personal behalf and on behalf of Department of Pharmacology, Faculty of Pharmacy, I profusely thank Mr. Akash and Pharma Elite Group for making this webinar possible and all the participants for their active participation, support and presence in making this program a noteworthy success. Thank you one and all. Hope you have a great day ahead. Thank you so much. I would like to thank all the participants for being patient and listening to me. Also, thanks to the college, the management, all the faculty members from Department of Pharmacology, the student coordinators and all the faculty coordinators. Sorry if I've missed anyone's name. Thank you everyone for your support and giving us the opportunity to conduct this session today. I hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you and have a great day.